for it is specialization. In other words, you have a certain, so for example, we could have students and we could have international students. All right? International student is still a student. Many of the things that, that are true about a student in terms of what attributes there are, what methods there are, are the same for a student or an international student. It's just that the international student might have some additional attributes, some additional methods, and so on. We said the way that you tell if inheritance is appropriate is to perform the, quote, is a test. Is this a that? So in this case, we'd say an, an international student is a student. That's a true statement. Therefore, inheritance would be appropriate for that situation. A graduate student is a student. So that would be appropriate. A faculty member is not a student. So therefore, there would be no inheritance relationship between faculty member and student. Likewise, a student is not a faculty member. So there would be no inheritance there as well. All right? So we continued the pizza example by talking about and defining a new kind of order, a delivery order, which can inherit from order, because a delivery order is an order. All right? And all the things associated with an order, or many of the things associated with an order, are going to be also associated with the delivery order. There's going to be a name on the order. There's going to be a tel telephone number on the order. There's going to be a list of pizzas that are being ordered. You, have to, you need to be able to add a pizza to the order. All those things are true about regular orders and are true about delivery orders. It's just that a delivery order has some additional things that we need methods for. And then it will have some things that might be a little different for a delivery order versus a, uh, versus a um, regular order. So. Let's go in and let's download the example that we were working at last time and we'll continue on it. We'll take a look, see where we were, and then we'll continue on it. So, we started our delivery order. And I screwed something up. I screwed up the delivery order quite a bit. Well, I guess we have to redo it then. My guess is I forgot to save it.
So, this will serve as review. We say it inherits by saying it extends, and then I give the class that it extends. So, delivery order extends order. In other words, a delivery order is an order. I only have to code the differences. So, I'm going to code the additional attributes that you'd have for a delivery order. And in this case, the additional attributes that you have for a delivery order would be that be a string for the address city, state, and zip. These should be protected, not private, because we want the subclass to be able to access these as well. All right, one thing that we said before is that constructors don't inherit. So we have to make our own constructor on this. So. I'm going to make a constructor public delivery order that is going to accept a string for the phone a string for the name A string for the address, a string for city, a string for state, and a string for zip. All right, so one thing we said about constructors is that in order to create a subclass, an object of a subclass, the superclass has to be created first. That is, we have to call the constructor of the superclass first. That's going to happen whether we code it or not. If we don't code it, it will call the no argument constructor of the superclass. Well, there is no argument there is no no argument constructor in superclass. Therefore, we better say what constructor we want to call. And we want to call the constructor that has a name and a phone number. So I'm going to say super arg name and arg phone. That superclass is constructor and do all that stuff. It doesn't really matter, but it might be confusing that I have these attributes in a different order, so I'll put them in the same order in both the subclass and the superclass. And then I'm going to set the equal to arg address. The city equal to arg city. The state equal to arg state and the zip equal to arg zip. Okay. So we 
have this constructor, we give it these five arguments. First thing it does is it makes a superclass, which is something you have to do by calling one of the constructors. We pass those construct those arguments in, create that. Then the attributes that are unique to the subclass. All right. Now we should have get set methods for these. So I'm going to really quickly generate some get and set methods for these. Why do we have to put these in here? We have to put these in here because they don't exist on the superclass. So they do exist in the subclass, but not the superclass. So we have to define them on the subclass. Notice we don't have to define a get and set for name or phone number. Why? Because that was already done on the superclass. And because this inherits from that, We don't have to do anything. Did I do? I've gotten set, set and get address, set and get city, set and get state. I just need to do zip. All right, so I'm coding the differences and the constructors. That's our common theme. That's what I'm going to be coding. I'm going to be coding the differences and the constructors. Now, what are the differences between a delivery order and a regular order? A delivery order, you need to know the address, city, state, and zip. All right. I have to code a constructor, so I'm going to code a constructor that accepts all the arguments. Uh, that sets all the attributes. The name, the phone, which are attributes in the superclass, as well as the address, city, state, and zip. And then I call the superclasses constructor to set the name and phone, and then I set the address, city, state, and zip. Then I have gets and sets for the address, city, state, and zip. So far, so good. I want to make a little tweak to this. I want to change this bake time to calculate ready time. Because that's a little more accurate. All right, That's what is ready. The pizza is ready after all of them have finished baking. How long have they all finished baking? Well, what's the longest bake time for any pizza? That's when the order is going to be ready. If it's a pickup ready. If it's a pickup order. All right? Now, undoubtedly, the pizza is going to be, the order is going to be ready at a different time if it's delivery versus pickup. Because the delivery time, well, no. Let's, let's keep it at bake time. I lied. So, will the pizzas take as long to bake 
whether it's a pickup or delivery? Of course. Will the price of the order be the same? Well, it depends. Let's say our pizza company has these rules, that we charge $5 for delivery. All right? And we'll have the pizza there within a half hour. All right? So we need those functions in the delivery pizza class. This one's a new function. Because you don't deliver a pickup order. All right. And we're going to need to change the way that we calculate price. So, this is something new, because we don't deliver pickup orders. We don't have a function to calculate the delivery time. This is not something new, but it's a different way that we do this for delivery orders. For delivery orders, we calculate the price of each pizza, add them up, and then add $5 on for delivery charge. For delivery time, it's the bake time plus 30 minutes. So, what's the function to calculate delivery time going to look like? Yeah. What we're going to do is this calc time isn't going to be an actual time. It's going to be minutes. How many minutes? It'll be delivered in 45 minutes or whatever. All right. So how do we calculate the delivery time? It's however long it takes to bake the pizzas plus, we said, 30 minutes. So I can create a variable called double delivery time and have that equal to 30 plus calc bake time. Calculate bake time. I can do that, or sometimes I can put the word this in front of it. So call the function on this object called calculate bake time. Now, the function calculate bake time doesn't live in delivery order. It lives in order.java. Is that a problem? No. All right. Another, a delivery order object still has all these functions. They just came from a different place. It came from a different place. It didn't come from the delivery order object. It came from the regular order object. So I can call this object, figure out how long it takes to bake all those pizzas, add the 30 minutes to it, and say, OK, that's the number of minutes it's going to take, and then I can return it. So let's look at what we have so far in the delivery order class. We have the things that are different for a delivery order than for a regular order, a pickup order. These attributes are different, right? We don't need those attributes if they're picking it up. 
They're picking up, we don't care where they live. All right? We have a constructor, right? Because we have to create constructors. In, uh, constructors don't inherit. We have functions and get functions for the various new attributes. We added four new attributes, address, city, state, and zip, so we have get and set functions for them. We have a new function, calculate delivery time. No such thing as calculating delivery time for a pickup order. Therefore, it's a brand new function. And we calculate the delivery time by taking how long it's going to take to bake those pizzas, add 30 to it, and that's when we expect to deliver it. Questions about this so far? Okay, last but not least is calculating the price. Now, I said that the price of an order is basically this plus five dollars. Okay? So, could I do this? Let's copy that code. Could I do that? Well, I just did it. So yes, I can do it, right? Is that a good idea, though? Is that a good idea? If you don't know exactly how to do it in Java, just think intuitively, does this seem like a good idea? No. Why does that not seem like a good idea? Right. Exactly. What if I institute a rule that any time there's more than five pizzas on an order, there's an extra charge for a big order? All right. I would have to change it here, and I have to change it here. Any time you see a case of code being duplicated, that should set up a red flag that I can probably do it another way. All right? Essentially, what I want to do is I want to do something similar. I want to do something similar to what I did up here, right? In other words, the delivery time is related to the bake time, right? It's 30 minutes more in the bake time. So if it takes us 10 minutes to bake the pizzas, we promise to deliver it within 40 minutes, OK? So what did we do? We called the calculate bake time function on this object, all right? Added 30 to it. That's our answer. What I want to do now is I call calculate price on the parent class. And whatever value that earns, I want to add 5 to it. All right? So I want to call the parents method to calculate price, add to that, and that's the amount of the order. Now, if you think about this, if something in here changes, like we add that surcharge for orders of five pizzas or more. All I have to do is change the code in one place, because this code is going to use that code to do the first part of the calculation. So how do you think we call this function on the super class? Super, exactly. So I could say price, double price, equals super dot calculate price. So what that will do is that will call the method called calculate price on the super class. It will get that value, 
we add 5 to it, and then return that. So if we change the way that the order is priced, like I said before, like if we uh, add surcharges for bigger orders or whatever, then we change that here. If we change the amount that we're charging for delivery orders, we change that here. Everything changes just in one place. All right? Now, let's go and let's test these to make sure that they work. Let's make sure that they work for a regular order, and let's make sure they work for a super order. Or, a, a, yeah, a, a, a delivery order. I'm sorry. So let's pull in the unit test. All right, I create my two pizzas. I'm going to make two pizzas beyond the first order. Then I'm going to create two more pizzas to put on the second order. All right, so I've created four pizzas, pizza one through four. I'm going to put the first two on the regular order. Then I'm going to create my delivery order. So, delivery order, D we'll say, equals new delivery order. And I'm going to put in the ads, city, state, and zip. Why? Because that's the only constructor on the delivery order. Constructors don't inherit. So we have to define constructors on the subclass. I'm going to add so two and or three and four to this order. Oops. Cost of order is D calculate price. Bake time of order is D calculate bake time. And I'm going to output the delivery time as well.
All right, let's go and compile this and run our tests. All right, order classes public should be declared in a file called order.java. Oh, I messed something up. Oh, I got to save. Got to save everything. All right, calculate delivery time. Did I probably just say calc delivery time? Let's change that to be consistent. All right, no compile errors, and I can run the unit test. All right. Let's see if this looks right. I ordered the same two pizzas on the second order, but it was delivery. So the cost of the order is $26 instead of $21, $5 more. That sounds right. The bake time of it is 16 minutes, which is right. And the delivery time is 30 minutes more than that, so it comes up with 46 minutes. So everything is correct. Now again, I've done an okay job testing this, but I haven't done a very, I haven't done a completely thorough job because I didn't include any medium sized pizzas, I don't think. I think I just have small and large. Uh, combinations of small and thin crust, small and thick crust and all that, I don't have. So I did an okay job testing, but not as thorough as I probably should have. questions about this. What's the key thing? I coded the differences. Let's note how many differences there are here. There's additional attributes. So a subclass can have additional attributes compared to the superclass. Think of student versus international student. An international student has the kind of visa that they're, that they're taking, the number of the visa, the date it's expired, and so on. So they have all the attributes that a, a regular student has, but they have those additional attributes. A delivery order has all the attributes that a regular order has. There's a name, there's a phone number, there's a list of pizzas. But in addition, there are these attributes. Again, remember we make these protect so that they are available in the subclass as well. Delivery order, public delivery order, we have a constructor, all right? We have a constructor because constructors don't inherit. But when we call a constructor on the subclass, we always have to call the, sub, uh, the superclasses constructor. If we don't, it will do it anyhow, and it will call the no argument version of the constructor. So in other words, if I take this line of code out, I'm going to get an error. Because it says constructor order and order class cannot be applied to given type found no arguments. Let's understand what the compiler is really doing. I never specified what constructor I want to call on the superclass. I omitted that. Well, the superclass has to get created before the subclass could get created. So it has to call some constructor on the superclass. 
If you omit which constructor you want to call, it's going to call the constructor that accepts no arguments. Well, there isn't a constructor that accepts no arguments in the order class. Right? There's only one constructor, one that accepts two arguments. And since I create a constructor here that accepts two arguments, that no argument constructor is not automatically generated for me. So as such, I get an error. I'm not saying is this the right thing to do, but would this clear up the air? If I get rid of this constructor in the order class that accepts two arguments, if I delete that, am I going to get the error now? Well, let's see. I got the error. Here. But I didn't get the error on the delivery order class. Why not? Well, because I call the constructor on the deliver delivery order. I don't specify which constructor to call on the superclass, so it calls the no argument constructor. There are no constructors in the unit, in the order class as of now. Therefore, the no argument constructor gets generated, and there, or it goes, goes by fine, and everything compiles correctly. Now, that's not the correct solution. But it works. The correct solution is probably to call explicitly the correct constructor in the superclass. Any questions? All right, let's play around for a minute because we're going to come up to an important concept. I'm going to come temporarily. And I'm going to change this to say order D equals new delivery order, will that give me an error? Actually not. All right. Think of the order D as saying we have a variable that you can put a pointer to any order you want to in. So any kind of order that we have, we can put in the variable D. Can we put a new delivery order in there? We absolutely can, because a delivery order is an order. So I have my box in memory called D, and it's a variable, and it holds a pointer to an order. Because a delivery order is an order, it'll be able to hold the pointer to that object. Let's run it and see what happens. All right. Cost right. 
All right. And I calculated the bake time right for this. Remember I said there's two parts to the statement. This part describes the pointer. I have a pointer called D that holds an order. This side describes the actual object that gets created. What gets created? A delivery order gets created. All right? And we store that pointer in a variable called D that can hold a pointer to any order we want. But what gets created in this case is a delivery order. So when we call the cost of the order, we're going to get the function that's written for the delivery order, not for the regular order. Because that's what the name, that's the kind of object that gets created. All right, it's a little confusing, I know, but what creates the specific kind of object is where we say new and then give the object name. This is only about the pointer. All right, our pointer is called D and it can hold any kind of order we want to in it. All right, now that pointer can point to any kind of order that we have. It can point to a delivery order, it can point to a regular order. If there was a third or fourth kind of order, it could point to that as well. But when we call a function on D, we're going to get the version of that function that's appropriate to this type of object. So we're going to get the delivery orders calculate price function. Now. This part gets a little tricky, too. And we'll go over this again uh, Monday of, the, of next week. Let's say I try to do this. And I try to call the function calculate delivery time. Does that function exist for a delivery order? Yes, it does. Does it exist for a regular order? No, it doesn't. So will this work or not? Let's find out. And the answer is no, it doesn't work. So let's try to come up with some rules for this. The pointer, the type of class, when we define the pointer, controls what functions we get to call and what functions we can't call. If I make the, the pointer hold an order, it means it could hold any kind of order there is. Therefore, the only functions that are available are the functions that are defined on the order level. None of the functions that exist on the delivery order level are available. Because in this case, we know that that's a delivery order. But in a longer, more involved piece of code, all the compiler knows is that that variable D is some kind of order. So therefore, only the functions that are declared on the order level are available. However, for those functions that are available on the order level, we're going to get the right version of them according to the kind of object that was created. So if we do this, when we say calculate price, we're going to get the delivery orders calculate price method. All right? So we can't call any methods that exist on the delivery order that don't exist on the order. But if we call a method that exists on both, we get the right version of it. We get the version of it that's declared on the
the super class or the subclass level on the delivery order class level. Okay, we'll go over more examples from this next time. We've kind of gone through the whole idea of inheritance, but I know that with inheritance, it's a complex subject. We have to go through this and we have to practice it and we have to do stuff with this. So that's what we will do next time. Are there any questions about this? Remember in lab, if you've turned something in, which you should when you complete it, uh, bring it up on your machine and call me over and I will grade it. All right, we'll see you up in lab.